All right, so I began 15 minutes talk, then I'll start the questions. If you have a question, you can write it down. Ushers, where are our people? Just wave, 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 uh -huh, wave. You can write. We would also pass the mic for those who want to ask. Today, we would answer questions. But let me say a few things because the women were so happy with me last month. I thought about the speaking man. They were hailing me. But let me say something to you about Nigerians. The same mouth that hails is the one that wails when the responsibility is passed. Because we live in a generation where very few ladies know how to be wife. I have sat with too many couples and I wonder how the husband copes. And you sit there and the woman is running her mouth and you're wondering, like you've left the problem to another problem. They are videoing this and it's even live. I shall endure the attacks that will follow this teaching. Because women like me when I talk to men and attack me when I talk to them. But I will talk. Especially those of you that have gone to university and corrupted your understanding. Women, tonight is your night. 15 minutes of arrow. Many girls just go to school and pick a secular degree and decommission God's commission on them. From the day you take the oath of marriage, you lost the right to disrespect the man. Even if he poor on himself and doesn't have potty character, you lost the right. Go to your mother, Abigail, and learn a lesson. She married a fool. But while the king was in the fool's compound, she could not speak. She ran after him out of the parameters of his compound and knelt down to save the same man and say, I know I married a fool. The word fool could not come off her lips while he was, she was within the territory of that man. Go and read your Bible. She allowed David to make all the threat and went out of the compound. Then she went and said, sir, even in saving his neck. There is a disposition that civilization is taking away. Civilization. If everything that is acceptable in the world is acceptable to you, you should question your Christianity. That's why when you come to dressing, who said people must go naked because it's a dinner? It's a dinner, so we must go naked. No, it's a beach. And the Bible says, when thou goes to the beach, we must see thy bum bum and thy cleavages. Genesis chapter 72, verse 72. And the Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 31, verse 72 again, that when it's a dinner, particularly an award night, lose your brain. Mm. Have you read the book of Zacchaeus chapter 2 <laughs> verse 2? I stumbled onto something yesterday. No, not yesterday, a few days ago. I called my wife. I said, come and see what your husband is withstanding. There's a culture somewhere in Africa. Let me know if you call the country and the particular culture. They now have a page on TikTok. It's a culture. Me, I went to TikTok to give life. I was receiving death. So they have this initiation ceremony for the girls. And there's no clothing this way. So that one is not posted as porn, it's posted as culture. The woman is under attack, she doesn't know. So when we talk about the attack on the men, yes! 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 You're under attack, mental attack. You don't know how to be a woman. You are a man with breasts. Ready to fight anything that come your way. In that bosky herself, liquid metal in the female body. <laughs> Humility, zero. When you are done talking to your husband, he feels less than bitter leaf. Inside hot water. You finish him. So he packs himself and goes out to go and survive. He looks at time, it's 9 p.m. I can't go home. 
Mine is a dangerous time to go home. She's still awake. <laughs> I need to go 10.30 when she's closer to glory than X. You know, this is the only way to talk to women in this generation. You have to use comedy to help them. I'm assisting you tonight. <laughs> you went to university, so you have mouth. Somebody just be wondering, did he quarrel with his wife? No. She's even currently in a state of intense humility. So I'm not bringing my personal problem. I'm preaching the word of God. You know, the wickedness has gone so far that there's now a suggestion in civilization that Paul was a male chauvinist and that the scripture is no longer as inspired by the Lord but written by a man called Paul. Yeah, the argument is out there. That Paul is a male chauvinist. Because when you read 1 Peter, for example, the piece of Peter, for chapter 3, from verse 1, wives be in subjection to your own husbands. Let me say this to you. You would have enough justification against what I'm saying. He said, even if some do not obey the word, they may be won over by your conduct, not your words. The destruction of the image of the wife in this generation is that Satan has made a person who should win by conduct very vocal. The victory of the woman who will win is to arrest her voice and determine what she says. So you are intensively emotional and speak through emotions and say things you cannot take back. When you begin to understand the dimension of help you bring, you realize that your voice has a place. There's a help you bring. There is something women don't know. Men look up to you for validation. So when you hack him, the first thing you are doing, number one, you take belief away from him. The next thing you do, you are prophesying him into a state. Because he's looking to you for validation. When you put him down, he doesn't see why he should be motivated to be any better. So you're not speaking strength. You have complained, you have complained. But you have not found enough sense to say, you know what? Rather than hack the way I hack, sir, you are better than this. There is something you are that is not coming out. So her voice. I share with you scripture. Let me tell you how powerful she is when she's in her place. <laughs> God gave Adam instruction. Eve gave Adam instruction. Adam obey Eve. There's a song, I don't do secular songs at all. But during our 10th anniversary, I was just listening to this song. I said, this song, this song, what for you manage? Just baslight small here, one. Use that for 10th anniversary. Come, come back on. Apologize to Christians. So I don't tell you. I know they hear Christians. And I heard the lines. I said, this song is even wicked. So it gives me justification not to go that way. But here's the deal. And as I'm saying this, I'm struggling to remember because I don't remember. But it's that song that like, can wreck you, I can make you or something. Uh, our love, something. Say, oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Let me try and be listening some more. Um, uh, mm -hmm. You're my downfall. You're my. Okay. My worst distraction. You sing it. You know it. Don't pretend. You know it. Sing it. Oh, I love you. You're my. Uh -huh, beautiful. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, that was distraction. My was fall or something. There's one line. You are my downfall. You are not my downfall. You are not my downfall. You are not my downfall. Will, you are my love. You are not my downfall. Your mouth will not curse me. You will not wreck me. You know, one day I sent Julia money to buy something. She bought it and said, oh my God, oh, thank you, baby. And every summer, I said, I sent you that money under protest. It's, it was not with joy. It's that you didn't have joy and you were overshowing it. And I asked myself, is this this problem I cannot fix? Take. That's how powerful you are. 
She bought the thing. I was thanking him before I told her, don't thank me. I send that money out of pain. No joy. Pressure. Pressure. The biggest lesson a woman will learn is that she's an atmosphere, not just a person. Yes, 100. You are an atmosphere. You are an atmosphere. I am an atmosphere. In the atmosphere of Jesus, everything is possible. No disease in cure. There's an atmosphere. It's an atmosphere. You are an atmosphere. Satan is very smart. So he created the atmosphere of the side chick. Atmosphere. Go around Abuja. How many are we here? Maybe 200, 300. Go around Abuja. You see thousands gathered in parks. They marry the woman I put at home. But there's an atmosphere. I'm not excusing them. It's an atmosphere. That's why I'm amazed when we come to meetings like this and we are worshiping the Lord, taking an hour to just worship the Lord and somebody is just wondering, let them talk now. We came here for teaching. No, it's an atmosphere. And for some of you who are still asking, let me tell you. I, I referred to 1 Corinthians 2 earlier. The truth is that I would not do this ministry if it is the way people just go and talk, 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 talk and walk away. We've seen the miracle working power of God and the way it happens is through an atmosphere. So sometimes I just walk home. She's correcting children. She's right to correct them. But I see there's an atmosphere that is changing because the correction is taking a shape. Madam, adjust the atmosphere. God put a heavy burden on the man and made her an atmosphere. That's the kind of help we're talking about. So Adam comes from all he came from and the atmosphere Eve created was to give a fruit to eat. So I speak to some people who are not necessarily saved and I say to them, you think it's enjoyment to take your husband out to certain kind of places. You are not just corrupting your atmosphere, you are giving him another atmosphere. So it's not fun to go clubbing with my husband, it's foolishness. Because you will not shut my eyes to the atmosphere you are taking me to. <laughs> I give you an example of an atmosphere in scripture. The Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath. In essence, the rot does not determine the atmosphere. My answer does. A soft answer. I'm an atmosphere. Don't think I'm speaking to just women. I practice what I'm saying. Like once, I, you see once, I told my wife several times, I said there are certain things I kept quiet over because I can't handle it. Then no, no, bring it on. I'm not bringing it on. <laughs> Every man knows that there are certain financial pressure. You don't come and discuss it. Solve it first. Before somebody starts having BP in my house at 30 something. No, you cannot have BP. I'm a buffer to be an atmosphere. I might say you should not discuss everything. Discuss so you sit down. Say, you know what? Thank you for praying for me. For like the last two weeks, you know, I've been quieter. Uh -huh. See, see the facts. But see how God is already helping. Why? You're creating an atmosphere. You know, some people are alarmist. <laughs> You know, if they're calling from your children's school, the first thing, leave the greeting, go straight to the points. Just go straight. Why? They are in custody of a person. It takes an atmosphere to answer call from children's school. Because I dropped the child, I'm supposed to come and pick the child. I'm not expecting your call. But it takes an atmosphere to react. Let me say this to you. When you begin to realize that your condition should not be conditioned by the condition outside, you would understand who Jesus is. We have been reading the book of John, right? In our uh, family Bible reading. We are in verse 9 now. Between John 1 and 9, they attempted to kill Jesus about three times. The Bible says he walked out from amidst them for his time had not come. So he did not go, you want to kill me? You want to kill me? No. He took charge from within. We live in a generation who want to burn the fire of God but don't want to be calm with his calmness. It's a problem. So the same way we do, cha, 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 is the same way we cha, cha, cha for problem. Because God has an instruction for every problem. 
So why don't I go back to that point of an atmosphere and ask, what do I do? That's why scriptures like James 1.5 exist. He said, does any of you lack wisdom? Let him ask. God who will not rebuke him for asking, but will give generously. Have you asked God for wisdom as a woman? Or Hollywood is convincing you? I say this with every sense of responsibility. I am not saying this to force anybody to suffer a marriage. I have never done that. We counsel rightly. But let me say this to you. Emotions are limited in his reaction. That's why we must go to fetch his own atmosphere. Do you realize that the boat was so boisterous, but Uncle Jesus was snoring? He's an atmosphere himself. So he rose up and looked at the wind. <laughs> you know what Jesus did when he said, peace be still? He took his calm and injected it in the atmosphere. Yes. Say, calm down. Calm down. I heard a story. I, I don't like sharing too many of it so that our authority is scripture. I just heard it. I don't know if it's true, but let me share it. This guy was sharing the story he heard from another man of God, so I'm third party sharing now. Uh -huh. he, he heard it to me. I didn't hear it, and I don't know if it is true, but it aligns with my understanding of spiritual authority. He says, this man got in a vision and the first thing he saw that the walls were speaking to him that Jesus is here. Because Jesus was approaching him in the vision. The walls of his room began to say, Jesus, the master, is here. So inanimate objects had to announce the atmosphere that came in. The wife is an atmosphere. God made her an atmosphere. So Adam came and he don't chop him. <laughs> He just extend the hand. Oga, waka. <laughs> if you're a man here, if you have eaten your wife's food and you're alive, one tanker. <laughs> one drop. <laughs> he said he slept peacefully. <laughs> he was not sick, he just. <laughs> My brother, I respect the atmosphere. <laughs> Thank you. 12 years plus. No poison. <laughs> atmosphere. <laughs> Praise God. You're an atmosphere. There's a time up. At five minutes, my friend. <laughs> my joke, but at five minutes. She must take her place. Do you realize how calm Jesus' mother was when they ran out of wine and he came to him? She came to him. See, they had a wine. See, woman, don't trouble me. No argument, no quarrel. Whatever he tells you to do, do. When you begin to give your husband a voice, he will speak the things you have been quarreling for him to speak. She just declared at that moment, the authority is not mine here. There's somebody with the authority. We shall defer to what you say, sir. Wait on him. The first thing your atmosphere must attain is to affirm to the man what God made him. You must affirm to him who and what God made him. Ah! You see, when I was teaching to the men, there was a lot of, yes sir, yes sir. You see, the men are just quiet. Tell them. In, in their mind, they say, just continue. Don't stop five minutes worth. Make it 15 minutes. I know. Don't worry. You shall be helped tonight. I am helping you people. Single ladies, let me tell you, use ordinary boys to learn how to be married. The number of times you have fought men is too much. I know they are not your husband, and you have all the argument. The Bible did not say submit to men, submit to your own husband. But that man is actually the picture of a man. He's wearing boxers, he doesn't have bra. Use him to rehearse. How to defer to a man? Because we live in a generation. Eh? <laughs> Let me tell you, the, see, education has been infiltrated by Satan to undo the culturing of the kingdom. We're not in a democracy, we're in a kingdom. One of the clips from last two months where I said, I'm lord of my husband, my wife. One lady came, came after me on social media. I directed her, go to YouTube, listen to it all. Because our lordship is not unto punishment, it's like Christ. 
We love him because he first loved us. If a woman wants to understand what I'm saying, how do you submit to Christ? When was the last time you argued with Jesus? Where are you carrying this? Where, where are you arguing with your husband from? Wives, submit to your husband as unto the Lord. The comparative analysis is clear. When was the last time you last out at Jesus? You, you, you're stupid, though. No, let's, let's act the drama. Jesus, are you serious? Say, me, I should fast. Are you kidding me? As unto the Lord. Oh, I heard a statement when my school mom died and I went there. Her brother said, we can ask God questions, but we can't question him. There are two different things. We can ask him questions, but not question him. Two different things. Let me tell you, the education against what I'm saying is getting stronger. A man lost his job. I watched him say this himself. He put a tattoo of the cross and a Christian symbol on his hand. And his colleague walks to him and says, what's the tattoo for? On his own body, not your body. Cross and Christ on his own body, not your body. He says, he's just identifying his faith. The guy says, that means you hate gay people. He said, I love everybody. He said, no, that means you hate gay people. The, the guy kept insisting. He said, I don't want to have this conversation. The guy insisted. I reported him to their supervisor, who is also gay. Two days later, he lost his job. They called security and walked him out of the company. His tattoo means he hates gay people. No word. The education is that strong. The attack is that strong. One of the things I want to encourage every babe here tonight, married and single, is to go back and ask yourself, how altered am I from God's original intention? The next thing you need to ask yourself is, how much of the doctrine of the wife have I understood? Because a lot of people want to get married, they don't even know what they are entering as women. It's a very tough office. It's a tough ask. It's not an ordinary one. It's a very tough ask. Is a very deep place to be. To carry another human and make Lord is not easy. First Peter chapter 3. Let her adornment, God wants you to be adorned as an atmosphere, not just by what you wear. He said, let her adornment not just be plating of the hair, wearing of gold jewelry and apparel. Let it be that inward man of, the, of a gentle and a quiet spirit atmosphere. It's a gentle and a quiet spirit. But the world will alter you. The, Lord, the, the world will leave you with ideas that are funny. I've met too many ladies who have problems with men. They just have problems. Just be a man. Don't let your trauma redefine every man. Not everybody is a monster. Let me touch on something small. I will come back to this teaching actually in full. But let me touch on something small. The admonition in 1 Peter chapter 3 was not for a good husband. 1 Peter chapter 3 is the flip side of Ephesians chapter 5 on the man. Ephesians chapter 5, when you read from verse 22, when he begins to speak to the man, he spoke to the man to love his wife even if she doesn't merit it. Women hail me for it when I teach it. But they don't hail me when First Peter chapter 3 says, whether or not he aligns, submit. Every time I have taught submission, I see, I, I see comments everywhere. He should deserve it. He will not deserve it. It's a command. How many of us know here that no matter, there's no circumstance that will justify slapping your father? No justification in the world. Argue to Supreme Court of Nigeria and to the Privy Council in England those days and to the Supreme Court of USA and come back that you carried your hand and you slapped your father. We must begin to draw certain lines when it comes to our offices in marriage. 
single people, female, if the person you are dating cannot be your Lord, you are with the wrong person. If the person you claim you want to marry cannot be your Lord, you are dating the wrong person. We will soon have screen, don't worry. When we have screen, I'll be reading different translations so that you see Bible for what Bible is. You know, when it comes to polygamy, men know how to quote Abraham. As stupid women will be supporting them. But it took a lot to say, they will take my neck if you don't say you are my sister. He handed over his wife to the king to sleep with her. She said, yes, sir. You will quote when Sarah said, take my maid, and he obeyed. He was obeying through his penis. That's why we understand why Abraham obeyed. The thing was hungry him too, to do nonsense. So he collected the maid. Well, Abraham said, as we they go, so. I didn't say under New Testament doctrine, should tell you people should go to Amadio and you follow. I'm just telling you the scriptures we used to quote to support our argument. But when we look at the flip side, we will not understand the New Testament explanation in context. If he can't love you, don't marry him. Why? The dating phase is where you test his lordship. The intention that dwells in him because he will lord you through that intention. You are an atmosphere. There is a culture you need to go back to. The world doesn't support that culture. The world has made us tough. That's why one of the commonest things I hear from ladies is that our mother suffered. They think we'll be like our mother. We'll not be like our mother. Keep quiet. Will you keep quiet? <laughs> Will you keep quiet? Nobody told you to marry the type of your father. It's you that went and carried the type of your father. Your mother suffered. You still chose somebody like your father. Look how Mumu is running your generation. This is where, this is where Gala people come say, Aya, <laughs> Aya, you have to know me. Mm. Or like it there. So, for the single lady, it's a journey of examining his lordship. For the married woman, it's to trust the Lord to activate his lordship in the right way. So that I can ask that question, let me just wrap this up here. How do we activate his lordship? Let me say three things that I'll explain subsequently. Number one, you validate. There's nobody who is so useless, there's nothing to praise in them. But we can become so clouded by all we don't like that it appears there's nothing left. Number two, we must intercede. So we validate, we intercede. We intercede, we pray. Let me tell you, your husband and your future husband, they are under attack. It's not a word of knowledge. I don't need the Holy Spirit to tell me. Satan's strategy is clear. You want to scatter your home. You have been using the mouth you should use for intercession to complain and complain. It, can it hurt? Yes, it can. Can we talk about, for instance, you see before a counselor, don't come and intercede with me. Come and tell me facts so that we we'll use wisdom. But I'm saying, if there's no prayer response in intercession, let me, let me Manuel, please come. Um, God will come. Watch this. You don't go do hair, self. I'm going to do this time next week. <laughs> God will just go there like this. Stand in front of him. You stand in front of God's way. Yeah. Face me now. Now went and walk good through. Man, where is you I'm talking about? <laughs> so here's the deal. Have you ever watched a movie like all this war, war, war film, as we used to call it? Tag team. Right? They are supposed to be side by side. 
Manuel now did Mumu, he forgot their training. And I shot, boom! Oh yeah, take bullet. Watch this. What has just happened? He just took bullet. What do you expect of God's will? If you watch those tag team, the proper one, he will both attack me and protect him just in case there's still any life in him so that he can make it. Because he needs to keep his part. He needs to even have the honor of returning his partner if he can make it. Very often we don't discern the problem. So what we do is, he's taking a shot. He's not able to perform his function as a member of the team. So rather than shield him and attack me, God's will turns on him. You are so useless. There's nowhere to argue. When war zone. He's taking a hit. Bend down like you took a hit. He's taking a hit. So here's the deal. You know how to die cheap death? Don't attack that enemy of our soul and our marriage. You are so useless. I said it. My father warned me. I followed you. My mother warned me. I followed you. At this point, his armor is down. He's also exposed. Because the focus is now the partner, not the enemy. This is where Jesus came to and said, Peter, Satan has asked to save you. He didn't say, Peter, you are a very useless human being. I started my journey with you in a boat where you toiled all night. I know what I've done for you in life. Peter, you are useless. I don't even know how I wasted three and a half years. Now I want to go and die. How will this gospel spread with people like you? Peter, you are useless. Satan asked to save you. I saw in the spirit. I thought you would stand for me. You are not standing. You are a mumu, Peter. He said, Peter, I prayed for you. When you are restored, restore your brethren. In essence, he went beyond the heat. He believed this intercession that it would work. He said, Peter, stand up. I got you. Stand behind me. Who is that idiot? Because until you know the enemy, your partner becomes the target. God bless you guys. Thank you. The person that is against your marriage is Satan. I know your partner is cooperating. But the, person, the real person against your marriage is Satan. It's not, it's not who you think. It's Satan. Why are we praying next month as we begin to take the questions we have? If you've got questions, you can bring them already. Why are we praying next month? There are things we cannot solve by ourselves. I don't want to pretend. Miracle service next month. Single, married, we are going to address stuff. We are just going to stay in his presence and pray. Okay? How to overcome adversities in marriage? E.g. sickness, sexual impotence, financial struggle. How to cope when a partner makes a mistake that is affecting the relationship, cheating, betrayal, gossip, losing interest in God, etc.? How to build a relationship with godly foundation when your strengths spiritually are not the same. A single person sent this question. The first thing is don't project evil to the degree to which you are projecting evil. It is not being proactive to plan for bad things. It's not. So I'm not giving curriculum to singles tonight to prepare <laughs> in that sense. I'm speaking more to the married who are there. To the single, what do you do? How many of you, okay, I know not a lot of Nigerians have ever bought a new car, brand new car. I've never even bought a brand new car in my life. Tell me that how. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> the economic calculation has not supported it. You see? In Nigeria, I got a new car. No, you're the seventh owner. <laughs> you're the seventh owner. It's just new to you. <laughs> the car is 15 years old. <laughs> it's not new. They have changed 42 tires. <laughs> I told you I could never stop it. 
But here's the deal. Would you walk into a franchise to pick a brand new car and you are preparing for, then you'll be asking the producer, which problem does he have? No, he doesn't have problem, it's new. Now they want a neighbor, what's the guy like called a neighbor? Where they use remain. <laughs> Where you are collecting the remainder, that's why you're looking for the problem it used to have. Because this one they have used it. <laughs> so please I beg you. What the single should do is to examine what they are collecting. The truth is, if any problem meets you in marriage that you did not see ahead, you were blind. And there are two ways God has prepared for you to see it ahead. And I'll explain. There is observation, then there is discernment. Observation catches what the eyes can see. Discernment catches what the eyes cannot see. And somebody say, so you can even marry with something? Yes. Because nobody in their walk with the Lord is perfect. They are a journey. So there are points you come to and God will say, that one is not red flag, it will be walked. So you are aware? Or you have a signal of it. So you don't just enter, okay, what do we do when X, Y, Z? That's why one of the standard things we must do for the person we marry before trouble ever shows up is to cover them. In fact, the fact that you married a Christian is why you should intercede more. Because it's your marriage that is a target. I tell people, some of you sitting here, the only reason you are single is because you are born again. Your friends, where they open leg, where they don't marry since. It's not like they are better. But they marry the kind of thing you can't marry. Because that thing right now is in the garden and they don't have a say. But they are married and flashing it on social media. He didn't sleep at home, but they snapped last week. The picture is preparing you. The picture is preparing you. But the penis is public toilet. Stop envying what you don't know. He, she can't even question him. Where are you? What's that nonsense? You know, I used to see all those nonsense. It's better to cry in a bench. You have not seen tears. <laughs> <laughs> even the bench go tire you. You go see bench. What's bench? I meet a lot of girls who are for sale. I'm telling you. Come and sit in front of me. It doesn't even have anything. I'll just be looking at them. Me, you are counseling with waiting woman carry follow me. Hey, I, mean, I have seen money moves in this town. You see that? Go and sell yourself. Say no, those are buying. Go and sell. Go and sell. No problem. What was that? He says. <laughs> so, what do you do as a single? That's why I tell people, all oh, this rush, 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 three months, here, please calm down. Oh. Because people used to ask me, what do we do? With, you know, what do we do with the time? <laughs> How many years do you take graduate for school? Is it two weeks? <laughs> Even picking where God wants to send, come at, they do nine months. Nine months, God will be patient. Gestation. You'll be going for antenata, they'll be stressing you. You'll be taking permission from your boss. Why? Time processes things. The Bible says, he that believes does not make haste. A lot of marital crisis today is a question of haste. Almost all of us were married. You know how they did crash marital counseling for you. Even you, man, you were happy that the pastor and his wife did not have time. So time was just going quick, quick, because the only thing in your mind is Saturday, you go and dance. People who dance, finish, they leave you to face the reality of your mumuness. Empty head, no teacher. I did my other counseling. I'm looking at time. Looking at time. Oh. Then when they are even doing it in group, you are happy because you'll be behind punching phone. You are punching away your marital piece. This night is a night of war. Focus, you know, focus. Take note, no notes. You had that marriage just shocking like naked wire. Bam! Bam! It's just shocking you, shocking you. Your wife will just make one move like chess, you are confused. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Marriage is as hard as your ignorance. It's as hard as your ignorance. That's why I'm happy I'm the man in this equation. I define this relationship. This relationship is going exactly where I want it to go. 
confuse the girl, reset her brain every time. Just be good, follow. And make one move like chess. My God. If I hear one complain, I might address it. Just complain. I don't fix it. I'm a mechanic. Fix the car. Let it move smoothly. See the way she's smiling, giving me tons of yes. Give me tons of I'm trying. So that's what you do. Let me tell you the truth. I like my wife. She looks fine. Calm down. But the, <laughs> will you keep quiet? <laughs> but the greatest quality that assures the future is the examination of the content I do, not the look. Let me tell you the truth. Forget all this foundation, makeup, lintel, eyeshadow, eye pencil. Oh, forget it. If you have foundation, you must have lintel and then roofing. You roof it. Uh, don't you know, if you go around shops right now, every sales guy carries eyelashes that are like umbrella, PDP. <laughs> or broom, APC. Or labor party. What's the sign of Mama, papa, picking. Pa, 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 pa. I'm like, how are you managing to see? <laughs> no, one day, let's produce a movie that shows the view of a person <laughs> with that kind of eyelashes. <laughs> then you see, <laughs> like somebody that is finding a king. The way Nigeria is hot, just marry a wife that puts long eyelashes. <laughs> like my daughters used to do. They say they want to be romantic, they are bringing food to me. And they say, para, para, the person with eyelashes just do, pa. <laughs> I beg, go. if you are wearing eyelashes, I'm sorry, but <laughs> reduce it. Somebody went to renew passport, immigration, cut her eyelashes. <laughs> I'm telling she told me, I said, so they said the eyelashes was too much. Yeah! <laughs> they said they want to see her real face in the passport. <laughs> she may even be watching, forgive me. <laughs> and if we do not pay gate fee for this kind of enjoyment of laughter, this night, please lock the gate. <laughs> So what you should do is to discern the spirit. It's a dangerous thing to marry a person you have not discerned. You discern the spirit. Who is this? A person can be full of mistake but be secure for the future. And somebody can appear perfect but be the danger. We discern for the single. For the married, I already gave you an answer to that question before I came. There's a place of intercession. There are two dimensions of intercession. Take note of this. This applies to single and married. Dimension number one is where I pray proactively. See, you don't need to have done wrong for me to cover you. Because the enemy, who is the enemy of your soul and our marriage, is walking about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So I already know the enemy is out. You have not done anything wrong. Then there's the restorative dimension of intercession where the person is already wrong. So there's proactive and there's restorative. So for this, that's what happens. Then in certain circumstances, when certain things happen, you now go for counsel because, oh, I love the way Olumide Emmanuel puts it, Pastor Olumide Emmanuel. Prayer is the key, prayer is the key. Prayer is the master key. He says it's not in the Bible. It's a song. He says master key opens every door. But the Bible says this kind does not go by fast. That means there's a kind that prayer solves. Then Genesis 8.22. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. That seed and harvest is what solves harvest problem. You can pray the Lord of the harvest. But if you don't put a seed, what are you praying to the Lord of the harvest? Because the Lord of the harvest is activated after your seed enters the ground. He's Lord of the harvest, not Lord of planting. You are Lord of planting. Alright? So, there are certain things we come to the point where we now seek counsel. Because the problem people make is that they think that everything is solved by prayer. Whereas, let me tell you the truth. I'll share a story my pastor shares all the time. True, true, true. I believe, I believe, I believe. And here's the deal. There are a lot of untaken answered prayer. 
Because God answers from the moment we pray. So you are going to need wisdom. How do I take the answer to my intercession into this family? Guess what? God will correct your thinking. God will correct your speaking. God will correct your disposition. God will begin to give you wisdom that makes you act in a way that takes delivery of the prayer. And this particular story I'm giving you, this couple were new. And I'm going to show you tonight, we must be careful to take wisdom from God to manage our own prayers. These couple were new believers. They just got born again. They didn't even know the things you and I know as Pharisees and Sadducees. And their son fell. He, he had an accident in the garden. And something pierced his eyes and took it out. So they went for operation. They were put back the eye. When the time comes to take out the plaster, they take out the plaster. And the eye follows the plaster. That happened and it happened and it happened. So they got this impression in their heart, just like we're worshiping tonight. And some of you will soon understand why we do that. And we're coming back in June. It's not a teaching matter. Next month, we're going to pray. We're going to ask for miracles. We're going in our marriages, in our families, in our lives, as singles, as married, blah, 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 and all of that. So the best they knew was, I think it was Eda Hosanna Music or those ones those days, not all these on our elevation and something. So they just got... It's a, 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 a tape that plays continuously and slot in the music and we're just worshiping and praying. Just that's the best they knew to do. They didn't know better. Then the woman enters a trance. She finds herself in this heavenly room that had no end. Like endless. And she saw human parts. Legs, hand, eyes. And Jesus said to her, this are answered prayer that my people don't know how to take. They prayed, I answered, they didn't collect. Like I sent you money in your account, and you say, because it's not cash. Cashless policy, man, is in your account. Carry your card and spend it. You say, no, you didn't give me cash. If I send you two million, my dear, go online, first of all, test it, <laughs> if it's real. <laughs> Guess what? And Jesus explained to this woman that a lot of times the reason they don't take is that they don't become thankful for what they ask. Now, she was seeing this vision because she was thanking him. Guess what? She came out of the trance and took out the plaster. It was a new eye and the skin around the eye was like that of a baby. Before she began to give thanks, the eye was still bad. So her thanks was not circumstantial. It was by revelation. Thank you, Jesus. It's the hardest thing for man to do when he intercedes and he's still focused on his flesh. Because flesh will always focus on the facts. That's where you come to. Let me relate it to single. And you look, oh, Lord, I want to marry, I want to marry, I want to marry. Your focus has been more about I want to marry. And you don't realize that he actually wants you to marry more than you want to marry because his purpose is tied to your marrying. That particular purpose that has something to do with being married and he himself is trying to arrange you but every time you are using complaint to disarrange yourself and you are even looking uglier now because complaint makes people ugly. It doesn't make them beautiful. <sighs> Can we tarry in the place that when we pray, we believe we receive? Mark eleven twenty four. what things whatever you desire. When you pray, believe you receive, and you shall have. How do you exhibit belief? Where you begin to thank him before you see it. And somebody looking at me, me. Thank God for that, my wife. But really, you don't know what you're talking about. Me, me. You don't know who you are talking about. Because you married Julia, you're lucky. <laughs> you are lucky. Let me tell you, all those people that I used to write online and just tell people, hey, these people leave. If you sit as marriage council of one week, your mouth will be tired of saying leave. You now realize that if we say leave, 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 leave. <laughs> May the Lord give you understanding as a pastor. I don't know what I'm saying. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we're not predicting or forecasting that these things will happen. But let me also say this. Why you are not forecasting evil? Every marriage will bring you stress. 
Noella, please find something for me. Thank God there's a mic near you. I'm going to read the scripture. I read it here last month. Uh, Matthew 19, message translation. We'll read from verse 8. If you got your phone, internet enabled, Matthew 19, message translation. Let's just do something quickly on that question. Because a lot of times, people get into marriage not ready for marriage. People are excited about marriage but not ready for it. People are old enough for marriage but not ready for it. Give her a mic. Read from verse 8. We'll just take that quickly. There's a question associated to that question by this person, and I'm going to lump it now. Must one be foolish for a relationship to try? If that's earthly wisdom, no. And I'll soon explain. Good. Aha, I got it there, but go ahead. From verse 8. Jesus said, Moses provided for divorce as a concession to your hard-heartedness. Please, after now, go and check the word concession, not the standard. Mm -hmm. But it is not part of God's original plan. Mm -hmm. I'm holding you to the original plan. I am holding you to the original plan. Mm -hmm. And holding you liable for adultery if you divorce your faithful wife and then marry someone else. I'm, I'm reading all this for context. This is not my focus now, of course, but you are getting the message. Very powerful message here happening in this generation anyhow. Go ahead. I make an exception in cases where the spouse has committed adultery. Mm -hmm. Jesus' disciples objected. If those are the terms of marriage, we haven't got a chance. Why get married? <laughs> he said, if those are the terms of marriage, we are stuck. That's what this MSG is saying. All right? We haven't got a chance. Why get married? Because the terms are actually not terms for joke. Let's read the next verse. But Jesus said. But Jesus said. Now what Jesus is answer? Not everyone is mature enough to live a married life. Let me tell you. People are old enough but not mature enough. People pursue this thing. They don't even know what's inside. Yeah? It requires a certain aptitude, aptitude and, grace. and grace. That's okay. I don't touch the other verse because there are some things to explain about. It requires a certain aptitude. Have you done aptitude tests before? And grace. There's a qualification. So I went to school five years to get a law degree. Went to the law school another one year. That's six years together of my life. And when I say six years, that's small. Because all the education I did to get to that point counts as part of it. Because I met a requirement to enter the school. But guess what? You just wake up, you say you're falling in love, you're married. No exam, no book, no test. Same way, no sense. If you are single here, marriage is tough. If you are married, you are finding it tough. Welcome to the place. You did not read the curriculum. You just entered. Bah, 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 they were dancing. You didn't know they were dancing you to walk. Like this, my wife used to worship me those days when I dating. I entered marriage, I just saw woman. I just saw power. Person that could not say, talk any, I just said no. Eh? You say no. <laughs> Me, the son of man. One of the first crises we faced as a marriage is that my wife had at the back of her mind, she has confessed this in public, so let me just say it now. I'm not the first to say it, and I'm not insulting, I'm telling her the truth that she has confessed before, plenty times before many witnesses. Julia figured that I speak as an orator, and she's not a woman of many words. Then I am a lawyer. So she came into marriage ready to withstand me. So when we got married, our arguments were useless and petty. If Julia said this thing is black, let me tell you what will be happening. I said, but this is not black. I'll start explaining with my oratory prowess. Guess what she'll do? She'll listen to you for five minutes and say, it is black. <laughs> Her strategy was simple, just insist. Yes. Am I lying against you? That was her entire strategy. Talk for three minutes, it is black. And I will be raging. It's not black. Look at the color. It is black. I was dying. It's later she confessed to me. Say, let me tell you the truth. I know I can't match you argument for argument. So I made up my mind. Once I take a position, I will have this argument. Many of them. Marriage requires a certain aptitude. And I was dying. I looked at her. What kind of error did I make in life? Because all this, he told me she's not intelligent. She doesn't have sense. I wanted somebody that could match me intelligence. But it is black. And I'm just dying like I don't enter. I check my age. Is this thing for life? <laughs> no vacation. 
this is for life. You know, if you just come, you know, I love your marriage. If I'm older, keep quiet. We're getting married. Julia warned me. She said, in case I come home and pot bones on fire, the way she loves movie, she can be carried into a movie and she'll forget she's cooking. Okay. Now. <laughs> Straight to the face. I say, what? You said what? I did not just think of pot burning. I thought of house burning. <laughs> Woman now that between January and now, I don't think she has seen a movie. The fear was hitting me back to back. What kind of problem is this? Is that married problem or married wife? <laughs> Marriage requires a certain attitude and grace. You will meet things that require maturity. Raw maturity is not, it will require it because nobody is fully unleashed until they are in your home. If you like cohabit for 10 years, have you not seen people who live together for 10 years then they divorce in two months? Yes. Because there's a spirit that comes with the atmosphere of marriage. Yes, yes. Something has, something is changed. Yeah. Something is new. Yeah. Feel the reality. Yeah. It is marriage here on earth. <laughs> What's the name of uh, that, that woman king we watch? What's that thing they used to say? Uh, Akoche and here. Yeah. Akoche don't lie. Akoche, Akoche has landed. Who, who, Akoche? Um, Ariela, you don't argue with. Uh, you don't argue with Zoge. Ah, you, you don't argue with Zoge. This girl, I was like a superstar to her when we dating. We married. I just got a mate. Wondering on the spot tonight, see smile. That's shaking me with your smile, my God. I'm just saying so that I should be happy. <laughs> what are you videoing? This generation. You're taking notes. I've given you a book. <laughs> you mentioned <laughs> you mentioned that you discern and observe as a single lady in a relationship. When you notice your partner lies and does not own up to it until proven otherwise, is it wise to proceed to marriage even as you pray towards his change? You are of your father the devil. When he lies, he speaks in his native tongue. I just quoted the Bible. If somebody show you your future father-in-law, believe it. To top any form of imperfection with lying is a problem. There are two categories of every sin. There is sin as a sleep and there is sin as a pattern. God will often not urge you to go on with sin that is a pattern. Because in a relationship you will see enough struggle. Why do I say so? I got born again in 1997. The conscious one, apart from the one we're doing, God inside church. Omar Akbar Crusade, IBB Square, McCordy. I ran out and consciously gave my life to Jesus. I'm still not perfect. But should there be an imperfection in my life that I sit with, I'm comfortable. That's pattern. That's not sleep. That's pattern. That's not sleep. So you need to discern the nature of imperfection in the person you date. And you don't discern based on what they say, but based on what your spirit picks. Everybody can lie about their condition. Discernment is what brings you to the point where you know beyond what man can say. When a meeting and somebody met me, Again, I'm not quoting it with authority. And said, so and so person in the meeting with us is a snake. And he says to me, as a fellow believer, one of the gifts I have is the gift of sin. He said, that person is a snake. You know what he means. So he was saying beyond 
or we could just talk about. All right? So it's important. And in fact, it's one of the, I think I, I, I thought about this some time ago. It's one of the things you need to consciously pray about. Don't date the person you are not taking before the altar. Because there are things they won't tell you God will reveal to you. And there are two ways God does it. God can tell you on top of this matter, run. Or God can tell you on top of this matter, I'm actually commissioning you to pray. I brought you here for this. Ah, very hard things to take. So God can tell you to pray about something. But guess what? Never say God told me when he runs foul of the authority of scripture. Because God will not speak outside of his word. So if you find a pattern of life, for instance, your father-in-law is well defined. Don't even argue. His name is Satan. If you marry him. Thanks for blessing us. Thank you for being a blessing to this generation. Ah, thank God. Please ask married couples, what are your expectations versus reality in marriage? Good. You expect to be happy. Happiness is a harvest, not a donation. I take happiness as a harvest here. See, let me not lie to you guys. That's why when I hear all those arguments in the body of Christ, is it your purpose before your marriage, I laugh. Did I buy my car for the AC? The AC just cools me while I drive it. So it would be foolish if I go on this and I say, you know, this weather is so hot, I'll sleep in the car tonight. No, buy AC for the house. That's foolishness. Because the purpose of the car is to be on a journey. All right? So when it comes to this, what if I bought a car I want to drive the car without fuel in it. That's an expectation that is false. So what do I do? Like one of my friends, very dear friend and brother in Houston, who was speaking this afternoon, then he says to me, I, I don't know how you do it. Because I told him I was in the children's school this um, uh, morning at the request of the school to come and do swearing in of prefect. They actually requested I dress in my full regalia as a lawyer, which I did. Then I, 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 I branched the office, just picked something, touched base somewhere else, got to the house, trying to catch my breath to rest against this evening. So he knows how busy my schedule is. He has been busy too. And I told him, you know what? I just structured my life to be able to take care of business. For instance, I told him, whenever I say that, people are shocked. Me, I'm always shocked too. Like a simple structure, we have Sunday out in every Sunday. Simple structure. So wife don't cook. We leave church, we go eat. It has taken us around this town up to Kuje, our math farms. <laughs> because sometimes you go to one place and one place and one place, you change that place, you go to another place, another place. Because a lot of time, marriage is as stressful as the sense you are not putting into it. Do you know what ordinary 5K sent to your wife without purpose can do? Because you have been paying bills, you have not actually taught her emotion. Because that's responsibility, that's not romance. Because there's a point that can appreciate you up to for paying bills then I need to step into romance. The one that does not have a tag to read. Why did you send the money? I just love you. It's just 5K. But I just love you for a woman whose ears have been itching to hear I love you. Hey, there are single people here. There's something I want to say. Do you know the eating implements? There's fork, there's spoon, right? Because I don't use s fork, so let me go to cutleries. But men here, all the single, I blind your ears right now. The easiest way to use the fork to eat is to use the spoon first. May the Lord give you understanding. Spoon. <laughs> Not every time. You want to enter? You want to enter? Come out! Come out! Come out! So as a young lady, <laughs> ready for marriage, but the wrong suitors keep coming. I congratulate you. The ability to understand and discern wrong suitors is a privilege of the spirit. Congratulations. And there has been pressure from friends and family. What is the possible way out? I will pray! I will pray! I will pray! I will pray! If I don't pray, Satan will make mess of me. Luke 18 verse 1. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. If you are not praying, that's why you are fainting. If you are fainting, you are not praying. If you pray, you will not faint. 
Do you know why you are sitting on Instagram and getting depressed? There's no night watch in your house. There's only a phone watch in your house. You are watching who has married, who has given birth to seven children in seven years. You're watching, you're just watching, you're just watching. Even marriage that will break next year, their picture is still tormenting you, but the marriage is on its way. It's good. <laughs> Nigeria celebrity marriage. Pepe people finish it, Pepe itself. I will pray, I will pray. <laughs> ah! I went online. I saw people arguing against the song. Satan cannot make mess of me. Whether I pray or I don't pray, shut your mouth, is smelling. Jesus himself went to pray all night. The reason we have some all night problems is that we have not done all night prayer. Jesus, God, came to earth, prayed. You are now doing new creation realities. Whether I pray, whether I don't pray, I mean, I know who I am in Christ. But two dollars you don't have. If one sinner just give you hundred dollars this night, you start kissing their feet. Like one of my friends, a pastor, so let me not call his name. But it's my very close friend, we joke a lot. Every time when we are speaking, I joke, he say, Ocheli, if you give me like $10,000 now, man, I go frame your picture of the worship man. <laughs> now I joke. He said, don't give me $10,000 now. I go frame your picture. I go, just bow. <laughs> Some of you that are very dangerous know, know my closest friends, so you may be suspected. Is marriage an achievement? No. I don't know. <laughs> Say? I should have something. <laughs> All right. Marriage is an achievement to the degree to which it confirms that you honored a process of God. But it's not an achievement in the sense of I have attained something. I, I, I've done something that people are not doing. Come on. Come on. I went to school. You said Congratulations. When you graduated, right? The congratulation is that you finished a phase. Let me put it this way. If you couldn't graduate, would you be proud of you? Would not be proud now. You didn't go there to not graduate. You went there to graduate. Do you get what I mean? So, yes, it's achievement. Yes, so I say yes and no. To the extent, a lot of people have called it achievement and it was not achievement because it was the only problem they entered in their life. So it was achievement on the Saturday, but a decommissioning for the rest of the days. So yeah, achievement to the degree that, yes, you cut God's mind on the matter. Because guess what? Let me say this to you. Satan picks on marriage because man created by God, God began to speak to man in the perspective of marriage. Let us make man an image after our likeness. Let them, the first reference to man was in the plural sense. Not in a single sense. All right? So, now, the reason Satan is so interested is because it's a portal of God's will on the earth. Because before he gave apostles or prophets, he gave the spouse. And the original intention on the earth is to run it by that institution. So that institution is under mad attack. And guess what? Satan doesn't just attack by making you stay single. Satan attacks by bringing counterfeit. So the biggest job, especially for the female, is to discern the messengers of Satan. And guess what? When I speak like that, somebody is now looking for the comment in terms of deliverance. Like, see, it's not everybody that is used of Satan that is aware that they are possessed. Some are just available. Lord, I'm available to you. My storage is empty. Let me tell you the truth. There is more unemployment in the realm of the spirit than in Nigeria. And I'll prove it. The Bible says when a demon is cast out of a place, he goes around seeking where to perch. When he doesn't find any, he will go to the labor market. Hello, guys. I was only recently relieved of my job. He went to sit out and the fire prayer. I know some of you have been here like two years now. And you are even more qualified than me. Can seven of you come with me? I'm no longer selfish. We can share. Go and read your Bible. That's what the Bible says. It says, and they come back, seeing the place empty. One left, eight came back. One plus seven. 
The Bible says his condition is worse than at first. Now, let me tell you this. Singles, married people, do you know why it feels like the more you pray about a particular thing, the deeper it gets? The demon you dislodged came with seven more. The problem is you began to complain about the problem and forgot to check it out with the same power that took one out. When you turn and say, Satan, I'm not confused about this situation. I can see your maneuver. Why do you think Satan visits you and tells you you stay single? What you should tell him is, Satan, if I was actually going to be single, why are you bothered? You keep coming at me with this same thing because you are agitated. So, Oga, go and sleep because you are wasting your time. What does the Bible say about having a speck? Okay, if you read the book of Ocholi, chapter 3, verse 7, it's actually not in the Old and New Testament. It's in the Future Testament. We are still writing it. <laughs> Speck is actually in the Bible. So in case you have heard, there's no speck. There's speck. The Bible says that what things soever you desire. Like me, I like this girl. Who, I like her. She's fine. Imagine how fine she was 20 years ago when I saw her. I thought I saw an angel. But it's when I married her and I realized she's flesh and blood. <laughs> See, babe. A babe and more. <laughs> you just find like 10 women combined. My God. Ha! Jesus Christ. Nature. <laughs> she's begging me to stop. I will not stop. I must cut her your brain. You must go home blushing. Smiling for molar to premolar, confused by me. My God. You want to cry? Oh, take sorry. My brother talk. They like talk. Woke up early hours of the morning, just heard that. Baby, I love you. Then you sit in the office, you just see, I love the way you love me. I love the way you father me. Ah! You'll just be doing video. Oh, baby, how are you in the office? I know you're really busy. Continue. <laughs> okay. God wants his children to have their desire, but not their lust. The first thing you need to do is to read your speck of your lust. Then it stays as your desire. Why? James says you pray and receive not because you pray and miss to squander on your lust. For instance, there are people desiring to marry rich people because their stepmother said they will never make it in life. It's their stepmother that is the motivation. God looks at the motivation. So, desire, God will answer. Lust, he will not. I'll give you another example. Until a little over 100 years ago, it was plum women that were used for modeling. But the culture has now been redefined. You meet a girl, she's starving herself. She says she's a model. You are not a model. You are a broom. You are not a model. If that's the size God gave you, so be it. But you are not eating. Have you met those people that they'll just put something in their mouth and start throwing up? Because their system has been twisted. Like me, between yesterday and now, I've eaten about 10 mangoes. Mango season, the Lord is my portion. I eat mango for a living. In case you love me, I don't have money to give me, give me mango. Buy it in bags. I hate it when mango is spoiled. No, no, it hurts me. You should be eating. Because some of you that don't go to the toilet three, three, three days straight, go and eat mango. You will put three times a day. Your system will be clear. I'm not a medical doctor, but I'm telling you, your system will clear. You will feel like you're fasting even after you eat. <laughs> mango is my speck. I'm wrapping up. <laughs> so, 
as far as this, as far as you can read the speck of the lost, because guess what? I've met many people. Let me use this example of girls. <laughs> Which I, I love everything about him. I just wish he's one inch taller. Shut up. Just one inch. I, I, I actually didn't want to marry a man. I'm taller than. Keep quiet. Keep quiet. Keep quiet. Will you keep quiet? Who gave you that desire? Hollywood? Or who? Because if you cannot question your desire, you, you reject God's spec. So you need to carry this to your desire. God, I actually want a taller. But if this is just lost, because I've watched people marry people that they felt a little could change. Let me tell you. The Bible speaking about worry. Say you have not been able to add one cubit. And may I announce to all the singles, you will never meet a person who will tick all your boxes. Even some things I thought my wife should be, I'm glad she's not today. I thought I wanted it. I wanted a mic slayer. My wife is just a glorified backup. Give her mic right now. She's not missing key. She doesn't like being put on the spot to sing as the lead singer. Otto soprano, bala, kataya. Just, just be the MD. You will see glory. <laughs> but I wanted a slayer, and I even dated one, where she holds the mic. Yeah! Yeah! But if I carry the ambition of a lead singer, to combine with my present life, the equation no go balance. I have a thorough follower of a woman. I couldn't get it all. You think this thing didn't bother me? It did. But it was my lust. I just wanted the proud of who, pride of whose wife is that? Oh, that's a chilly's wife. There's a popular singer in this country whose wife is equally gifted but has been largely sacrificed to run the family. I mention no names. If you know them, you know them. If she didn't do that, they will not run a home. Yeah. They are brutally both gifted. But guess what? I see her reward coming. In the public ministry sense. Because that thing is a face. Yeah. I don't know them personally. We have never spoken in person, but that they watch. He must have taken something to take that space, to take that role. So sometimes, like I say, say, people often get later irritated by what attracted them to a person. Yes. Yes. Ah, I love the way. Yeah, I mean, he's the life of the party. Then you marry him, I want to keep him to yourself. You should not talk to anybody. Which party will he live? <laughs> so be careful of the spec. What you are calling spec is intelligent. intelligent. Ladies, let me tell you the honest truth. Don't marry an intelligent man if you are not secure in him. Women will follow him. Right now, we know they pursue them. They follow us. Just have sense. See, all the ladies just are wondering what I'm saying. I'm telling you the truth. He's intelligent. He's intelligent. But you cannot stand a woman greeting him. Hi. Why are you not Igala? Mali, but Ibo. Ibo. You know, when rain falls, you come out. You know where they're catching eh? these this birds, uh, these uh, insects? Rain brings them out. Once you own the light, you want to date intelligent man, but you don't want women to greet him. I do say you should be doing bad things. They, they should not even greet him. When I say Igbo, that insect is called Igbo in my tribe. You know how Igbo follows the light, right? They gather the light. Gather. So even your speck, when God gives you your speck, cover your speck. <laughs> you want to marry fine woman? They are toasting my wife left, right, center like she's bread. <laughs> Even your speck is problem. Because not be only you like him. That thing when you like, others like him too. My speck, my say, if some of you know what your speck will attract, you just marry your non-speck so that I can help you. You don't marry person who I don't like so that everybody knows who I like him. Lord have mercy on me. How did you give me this mouth like this? Let's begin to wrap up. Don't leave here if you don't, if you don't give us support. To. Put the offering basket there. Nobody should leave this place. I'll go to Ghana in two weeks. I will pay bills. Come and sit in free program. I just receive wisdom and laughing. You drop money before I leave here. Don't. 
Lock the door. Nobody goes. Let me finish the question of prayer. Collect your money. <laughs> Can you state the roles of a married man and a married woman? No. Go and read my book, Till Your Death Do Us Part. Read my book, Love and Submission. In fact, Love and Submission is free on Okada Books. Till Your Death Do Us Part is our biggest book. In fact, if you are married here, well, sadly, we are not printing here. If we have more money in our hands, we print it in Nigeria. So on Amazon, you can order printed copies. So every time we travel, we get a few copies and come back. I don't have copies to give now or to sell. But it's our biggest book. It contains 65 reflection points for couples to just reflect on. And let me say this to you. If you are single, once you get dating anybody, do an assignment I always give everybody I see dating. The woman should write 50 things that define a wife to the man and email it, not WhatsApp. Not what can be deleted later. Email it and archive it. Store it. The man should write 50 things that defines a man, a husband, and send it to the lady. Let everybody define themselves so that you know what you're marrying. Because when you come to the definition point, you realize that the person you want to marry may be thinking other things other than what you think. Because you are going into their life with an expectation of what they should be. You want to hear that thing. I can teach entire series on it, but please get that book. Most people don't interact with Jesus on the intimate level. How can we develop ourselves to that point? Number one, plan to read the Bible once a year. I'm not currently achieving that. My wife has been achieving that. I indict me and I praise her. But I have a strict Bible study regime. Now, right now, we are doing something. We're taking one chapter of John. We're on John now, but we're doing the books of the Bible. So, we come to our bedside, we all kneel. If it's 50 chapter verses, we take 10 each. Whatever number it is, we, sp we split it, we read it, we tell each other what we have learned, we pray, we go to bed. If you don't put yourself to a routine, spiritual things will not be achieved by you. Put yourself to a routine. Do you have a day you choose to fast every week? See, spiritual things are made easy by earthly decisions. And that's why you can't ascend until you begin here. Do you realize that if you don't pray long, you actually have not been praying? Because you are praying and still thinking, you know, you are praying, that's when you remember that Sandra spoke to you in a bad way yesterday. You are just praying, at least Sandra, I mean, I'm go here and at this stage, you are like playing that is taxi, you never touch air. Carrying is the decision that makes you engage the spirit. Let me tell you, 30 minutes to one hour, you are still in the stratosphere. You have not yet. So when we really pray, it's when we stay. You just realize that gradually you are ascending. You are leaving this realm of thought. You are li leaving this realm of memory. Leaving this realm of flesh. Because see, flesh from the fall of Adam was not built to cooperate with the spirit. The moment Adam fell, oh, read your Bible now, he said the flesh was against the spirit. It opposes it. You'd have been a great prayer warrior but for Instagram. That's why I put somebody on assignment now. She's on day four or five, two weeks of no data. First two days, she thought she would die. Right now, she realizes that she can live. No data. Let me tell you, if you die today, ba, all those people are trying to keep up with, it's RIP. Let me even tell you one wicked one, me, I used to do. I don't consider it wicked. I always have more friend requests than I can accept. So when people die, I pay my life respect and defend them. Yeah, it's space taken. You thought I was wicked. What am I doing with your account? The only person I know that is late whose account is still my friend is my mother. <laughs> my mother. For sentimental reasons. Leave flesh. If sexual compatibility is important and required in choosing a life partner, then how will one know they are sexually compatible? That's good. So after you knock person finish, no be your spouse. Whose who sp future spouse did you finish? <laughs> 
I have to go pigeon so that I can explain better. So by the time you don't go seven people, future wife or future husband, to just check your compatibility. <laughs> sexual compatibility is a fast. What we should be checking is sexual capacity. And I'll explain. Sexual compatibility is a farce. What you should be checking is sexual capacity. That's why I love Redeemed Christian Church of God. I'm not a redeemed member in terms of local assembly. Some years ago, they said, do so and so test. People began to attack the church. Anything church do, you will attack. Do fertility tests, you are attacking. Go to social and so hospital, let them check that you are alive. Let me tell you, person when they drive before, when you teach them, he go drive. So what people call compatibility is like we are stoic and fixed in our sexual behavior. Is capacity you want, can it rise? Is he alive? Does he have seed? Did God give Adam curriculum? Adam knew his wife. He's a knowing. The word knew there is he had carnal knowledge. Let me give you an example. You don't miss what you have not tasted. God's intention for sexual purity is actually that we use our partner's body to set our taste. Because the problem of sexual satisfaction in marriage is that you are comparing your partner with experience you should never have gotten. <laughs> so for a lot of us here, let me tell you, married and single, we need to go for spiritual purging. There are memories that are not your portion. So you are just, your husband just touches the Kai, the way John the kiss, this man, mouth, they even smear. Comparison has started. This one cannot touch like Peter. Then this one cannot do like Haruna. Then your, your mind is just going, Haruna, Peter, John, Haruna, Peter, John, Haruna, Peter, John, Haruna, Peter, John, Haruna, Peter, John. Then the innocent Samuel is, no, this Samuel, ah! <laughs> ah! No, let me use another name. The innocent, let me look for a name that is not here. The, the innocent Kelvin. No, no. And the innocent, let me look for a good name, Stone. Stone, John Stone. The innocent John Stone is there. Thinking that he's touching his wife. No. His wife is being taught by her memory. Her memory. You think this thing is a joke? People have counseled with me. Plenty, not one, not two. Plenty. When people get honest in sexual counseling, you will hear it's rooted in comparison. So what do we go for? And let me tell you, baby, come. I can't use any other person for this interaction. As a Christian dating couple, chemistry is easy to feel. You cannot date somebody for one month and you will not see when fire they burn. Fire burn, fire burn. Like when I was dating this guy, that time, not this one I can hold her, I'm normal. Though. Erection was easy. Hi! It's like you just, I just hooked my wife. You know, Christian born again. I went to NYC camp. Girls were telling me that they would die. Two weeks, they were not says. I told them I have not done it. They're looking at me like miracle worker, way maker. You are not what? They were catching people inside bush. Or use the equipment. How do I know? The only thing that was happening is, ah, you, you just, you can't date a man and not feel when his union bank is reacting. Big, strong, reliable. Do you, know you don't know union bank? That was big, strong, reliable. You will see movement. Even if he had not attempted to touch you. I will never forget. One day like that, we're just, we're hanging out. You know when the master doing like <laughs> Why? <laughs> Something was moving. I was covering, you know, recover. I was doing like this. I had to tie my seatbelt. I think this thing you want to embarrass me. You want to shame me. <laughs> God no go shame us. Ah! Are you understand what I'm saying? So observation. You cannot be with a person and there's no chemistry you don't know. Then top it up, go and do test. It's not just HIV and pregnancy you do. Go and do test. Are we okay? And there are two reasons you do. 
Number one, to know. Number two, to know if there's a prayer point. Because there are people that God will intend for you, you will meet a problem. You will see something. I'll give you the story of a man of God. The lady had a situation that made her lose her womb. And she was so beautiful. Story I heard authoritatively from the minister who shared it. And he said the people are in this country. Authoritatively. So I, I can just reshare it. The guys will come to this lady. She will tell them, let me tell you. Mm. They will walk away. Mm. Her husband that is married to her today with four children, she said the same. The man stayed. The man said, I know who sent me here. Thank you for the truth. I stand with you. They are children. So when people, let me say this to you. When there's sexual related issues in marriage, the problem very often is that selfishness takes the place of agreement. Because you can marry a person who started well. Then a situation happens. The just shall then live by faith. Matthew 18 will now come into play. If any two of you shall agree as touching anything. I don't know what they define anything in your village. Because some couples even go through financial stress. The problem you are having is that you have not joined hands to pray. It's formula I use in my house. Oh. There are many things that has left brain. Brain can't handle again. We join hands. Oh yeah, it is time to join. If any two of you shall agree, marriage is the hack for agreement. I don't need to call a pastor. I don't need to call a brother. I don't need. To, it's like a sister to me. Laba 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 laba. But what happens, especially when it touches sex, selfishness will enter. He can't satisfy me. He got this. He got that. He got that. But that. But all your eggs that are satisfying you still left them. Why? Because there's something beyond satisfaction. Sex was actually never meant to satisfy. Sex was meant for bonding. You think you are okay, then you begin to desire the same thing. Yes. <laughs> now we will talk about sex soon. It's nice. Let me wrap up with this question. And uh, This person, you mean, oh, one, two, three, back page, front page. Please, differentiate between dating and courtship. Listen to the teaching of February when I began this series, Understanding Dating, Courtship, and Marriage. So go to YouTube. Is it okay for people in a relationship to go out and have fun in the beach? Yes, if you are not wearing bikini. Wear jeans. Do you know awaken love when it is not time? That page I showed you when I confessed to Julia. See, I stumbled on this page. These girls are not, they're not smiling. Every shape and size of breast. I said, mm, not interested. You know when you keep clicking, not interested, the suggestion will go. Ah, I'll just see melons, melons, melons. So, is it okay for people in relationships to go out and have fun? Have fun as long as it's clean. Finish. You know, the problem is that we want to have the fun that entices us. Go to Millennium Park and have fun of walking together. You can't do anything in public. No, but you want to have fun watching Netflix. It's a lie. You will fix the Netflix. You just realize that it starts from a hug. <laughs> wow, did you see that scene? I saw it. <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> like a horror movie. <laughs> horror movie. <laughs> Then you just realized that from a hog, it became warm. Uh, you know that Nigerian movie kind of thing? Just turn. Nagin, nagin, nagin. Don't tempt yourself. You will do what you cannot imagine. Sexual discipline can only be attained by very difficult decisions. I will never forget. I used to say, I hope they are videoing, but let me confess. So Julia was serving in Akure. And the dating had not reached the phase where my father would permit me to travel. Daddy, in case you watch this in future, I'm not confessing. So I said I was going to collect my result. And some of you, you are, you are giving more excuses than strategy in your relationship. See one strategy. I told my father in Akure, I'm going to collect my certificate in ABU. But guess what? I, I said I need three days. You actually need three days. But I set up something. Somebody was helping me. In a way, the day I arrived, I will pick him because I wanted to go and see woman in Akure. So I landed Zaria from Makodi. The last stage was for me to sign and collect. So I signed. Enter road to Kaduna. Enter road to Akure. I got in past midnight. Two days of management. You think sleeping in the hotel with her was not hungry me for a covert journey? You think it was not hungry her? That's in pain. But we agreed before I traveled. Thou shalt not sleep 
with me in that hotel. Do you know how that in pain? Now, her roommate was a Muslim. All she needed to do was to adjust her standard. This person will understand. What she did was to project the standard more to the lady. So the lady had an expectation of us. We've added that layer of pressure on ourselves. Do you get what I mean? Do you know she could have told the lady she's traveling to Abuja to see her parents and create two days? Your flesh will never cooperate. You will force it. The reason why we have done all the things we have done in this life that we should not do is that you came to the... Is that the way they pamper? No flesh where you go pamper. If you pamper flesh, if you pamper flesh, as I'm talking, you know people that are just one text away, you sleep with them. For they're just waiting for you to move. Block them. What do a partner do when he or she significant order? This is the last question. Is demanding for space and time. <laughs> That's technical breakup. Inconclusive election. These people are still young in their early 20s. He's confused. He needs to read all my books. Or she's confused. He or she is demanding for time because he or she has a lot of to handle and want to handle it alone. If you want to handle things that will lead to suspension of the relationship, what are you doing with me? You know, let me say this because it's so easy to give some of the answers I've gotten from you now. Exactly, that's it. Yes, he say it. I tell people, no condition should bring a person to the point where they are suspending relationship and you are getting used to it. They will suspend marriage. Because the things that happen in relationship will happen at a greater scale in marriage. So if they get used to suspending relationship to handle things, that means your space is unknown. For instance, I lead a law office. When pressure comes, everybody finds their place. So like we were doing a job recently that really taxed us for like six days we didn't sleep. I was telling other colleagues at the job, my lawyers close at five because they are in an office where they don't, there's no closing time. That's the kind of pressure they are in. I said, no, I don't practice that. My guys close at five. But where there is something that makes exception of the rules. And I said to them, I just joked to them, I said, let me tell you guys the truth. You can actually be so busy losing your life. And I'm not going to set up that kind of system. But guess what? With my policy, there's a kind of thing that we learn. My guys know the first thing I do is, okay, status is changing. Something has shifted. Then we step in and hand. That's why they are there. So I will not say because you close at five, something comes that should keep us six days. You have to excuse that normal and deal with this together. That's why you are here. That's why you're here. Because the hour is going to come that we will do this. So, it's an indictment on the quality of the relationship. Because if the relationship were decent, do you know you actually go to people you are close to when you're in trouble? How do you have your best friend? Is the person you can confide in when it's toughest. And I say that to challenge every marriage seated here. If your spouse does not find you as the safe space to speak, when they're in pressure, then there's a problem. Back to the question of atmosphere. You must be that safe space. You must be that listening ear. You must be that ear that can hear them out. Ladies and gentlemen, so what we are going to do, um, Paul says I will not disobedient to the heavenly vision. I will not fall into the temptation of saying we'll continue asking questions in June. We have more months to do a lot. It was while I was driving here, I sensed we needed to pray in June. I said, we'll come here and worship and pray. Let me clarify. There are things that we need to address via prayer. Both personal, marital, financial. So we're going to spend time in June. Now, one of the things you'd have noticed, we just come here. Uh, this is not advertising you in. But please, help us extend the invitation to everybody. When is June date again? Second Friday of June is what? Would have, ninth, yeah? Would have just come in from 
Ghana is when again? Okay, we're coming in on 5th. Um, when it, 10th. So we're back 10th of, 9th of June is when we're back. Um, it's a miracle service and we'll just do that. Final thing before we pray, we'll take five minutes to pray before we go. Um, final thing, you've heard us say it again and again and for those who have been coming, um, the reason we do the free events we do is because people give. We spend a lot. Plenty of money. What's ahead of us? Ghana, two weeks. Uh, um, the next sit out, how many days after Ghana? We are, paying, we are paying for everything we do. So you can support, you should support. Um, then July 15th, the mega hangout, two days later ahead for the U.S. Uh, God has opened doors for us. I'm ministering at two annual youth conferences, one of the Apostolic Church, one of Redeem. Uh, both are for North America, not just Houston. Or annual youth conference for North America, annual youth conference for, uh, Redeem, North America. North America covers America, all those Dominica and blah, 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 all those North American countries. Um, then we have the hangout, our event. Now, God has raised us people who, um, I mean, I'm, I'm so encouraged by what's going on in Houston right now. So the hangout in Houston will be 29th of um, July. They are working already. We got a venue already. They sent 90 something, 80, about 80% 80 of my flight ticket already as a contribution from them. Please clap. It's, it's a good point to clap. So it's a lot is going into it. Um, I'm touching base with Dominica. There's a gentleman there who has insisted if you are coming to the U.S., you, somebody said I should not go and enter cyclo. I've been a hurricane. I'm not entering a hurricane. So I, I'll touch base with Dominica, get back in and do the stuff and get back here. Now, that's just, God has just been faithful. That's the truth. Um, so our guys will be glad to give you, you can put the account number if you got there. Um, if you got cash, cash is usually the smallest. So you just drop that small one, but collect the account number. All right. Um, we sustain the monthly sit out by proper bills, real bills. And somebody's wondering, how, how do you guys do all of this? Free, free, free? Yeah. I was going to say earlier, but I decided not to say. I was going to say how much we have spent this year already. Uh, the bill is quite, is quite. But somehow, God is just faithful. God is just faithful. God is just faithful. Now, one other thing you can do and do well, we have a partners group where you give regularly. On that group, we also give details of how we spend, how what we're doing, the burdens that we need to carry ahead. And because we keep praying, we pray for our partners, we talk, we, we give accounts to our partners to be fully accountable as to what we do. All right. For instance, uh, here, let me say this, I was not going to say it here, but if you know anybody that can give us Ghana CDs eh, or dollar at proper rate, call the people that are selling Ghana CDs, they are telling us they want to sell Ghana CDs, they are doubling it. Hmm? God even did, somebody gave us a, a few hundred dollars at the official rate, her money that she could have sold. Yeah, that was a few weeks ago. So it's part of what we have saved towards Ghana. And see how God does his things. Our team lead in Ghana, when we hit that crisis of getting CDs, has actually been spending his money until we come. So we we'll take dollars in, and it's a good point to clap. Hmm? Spend. So we have not sent one cobalt to Ghana. I wish we had screens to show you the venue we're using, secured, and all of that, our accommodation. Manuel, Zami, Ben, Julia, me, Asogba, we are about six of us traveling to Ghana. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we do just one thing as we pray? Don't go now. If you are staying tonight, it's five minutes more. So don't forget, I had account number was there. Don't forget to give. Uh, can we do one thing? Can, can we ask God to do one thing in our life specifically before June the 10th? June the 9th, yeah? Can we rise to pray? Just one thing. Can we corporately agree in the name of Jesus? Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Can you pray? Just one thing. As we corporately pray right now, what, what's that thing you want to trust the Lord for? Specifically, one that we can say. Please just pause. Let me put context to this. Let me put context to this. Context to this is very simple. Jesus said to that centurion, Go, your son is well. 
the man was so smart, he looked at his time. The moment he approached his house and they told him he's now well, he asked them, what hour did he begin to amend? At what hour? I'm just saying, I was at Sital 12th of May, and I said a prayer that I asked the Lord, then I asked the Lord that when I come back in June, I will say, see what the Lord has done. Oh, let's pray now. Cast your cares. Drop it before Jesus. Thank you for the privilege of your presence. Thank you for counsel. Lord, we thank you for your word says what things we ever we desire when we pray, we should believe, we receive, and we have. Lord, we lift up every request made tonight in your presence. You are too faithful to fail. Lord, I ask for uncommon testimonies by the might of your spirit cause miracles to happen cause miracles to happen by the might of your spirit Lord in the same token I ask everyone giving to us this assignment every volunteer standing making effort to make this happen speak the blessing right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, answer them in this matter. In the name of Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. Hallelujah. God bless you.